to pick. So I feel like, to me, the, it's game three at some point, you ban Chen Enigma and then pick Prophet because yeah, you're first that, that to me is the safest draft opening for, for them right here. Well, we'll find out if that's going to be the draft opening or not. We actually have a draft for game number three. We hop into it now, and we talk a lot about the love for Dyer. you got to remember, it's Radiant who won game one and two. So... Here we go. Earth Spirit again going to be banned out. OG, get rid of the Chen. No more Puppy and Nigga going to be seen uh, this time. And now we have to see what the secondary ban is going to be here for Secret. So let's say Secret ban Prophet because they expect OG to first pick it and they're afraid of it. Then what's OG take instead? Is it IO first? Lone, they would have probably first pick Lone Druid. Lone Druid okay. was one of the so, biggest game ones. So ones. if they take Prophet, what's your play Secret? I like Alliance's approach with the Spirit Breaker, actually, pressuring... Or well, maybe you open with Wish Doctor at the very least. Like, you, you see, like, especially when... you take Tide. Tide as well, first two. Oh, well, OG takes I mean, OG takes the Tide, so... Never mind, I was about to say Secret would spawn Seeker's, to NP with Tide. Seeker's gonna get yeah, the profit. Tide and NP are the two most valued offlaners right now. And yeah, Misery is 3-0 and with Tide when it was in the hands of Secret here. OG continued to grab it for themselves and deny it away from him. Well, it's gonna be all three games for Moon, likely, on the Tide. Unless mm -hmm. they do something crazy. Just wants to go around backstroking people. <laughs> there were no happy little trees at the end of that game. Pro provided you're winning the game, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> You gotta go with style, even if you're gonna lose. Come on now. Yeah. A lot of stake for the loser, though. The one who loses does go down to those scary best of ones, and it's not an easy opponent awaiting him. It's Virtus Pro, so. Do they do the same thing? Oh. I O O D. Oh, that is a big change up. I mean, OD did work out really well for them. And it's also a hero that we were talking about doing a panel where they could do this hero in two lanes, in the mid or in the safe lane, so it keeps their options open. It doesn't really reveal too much of their overall general strategy, apart from having good lanes with the OD. I think also OD just generally matches up very well versus Tide. Because yeah. generally, like, you just walk in there as Tide, and then whenever something bad happens, you just Ravage. But, like, if you can't really do anything about Astral, you're not going to get BKB as a Tide Hunter. And if you stay too long in the fight, you get all your in stolen. I mean, so it's... more importantly, it's also the lane, right? Yeah, the lane is also just absolutely terrible for Tide Hunter. It's like if you're laning against a safe lane OD as a Tide, and your jungle gets blocked. I mean, that, that is absolutely the worst case scenario for the Tide Hunter this game. It's like in the previous two games, did the off lanes cam got blocked? You remember? It wasn't blocked. It was warded. Where the first game they put oh, the yeah. ward by the ancients, and the second game they did the same ward on the by the radiant T1 tower. But the second game it got dewarded. Yeah, which so is... I think OG kind of aware that they like warding it. Yeah, we'll see. I guess there might be further evolution. So it's OG who bans the clinks this time around. That's interesting. They banned it in previous game as well. Yeah, it was they, a different was it game two. Well, they one, they yeah. had the IO that time. Yeah. And Clinks is really good against him. It's just it seems like a kind of comfort pick for Envy right now. He's one of his more successful heroes, and <laughs> well, <laughs> just put him in that booth and he'll stay uncomfortable. So I don't think they have to worry too much about Envy <laughs> getting nice and loose. He's not too comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, his eyes are a bit dry in there. He's actually borrowing my eye drop. Per so. Perhaps I'm taking time. credit for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say what. All right, Dakota. What how much money do you have on secret now? Let's be serious here. You, you need to negotiate here for for a cut. You know, everyone talked a lot about needing like the the masks to protect you from the smog, but they didn't warn us about needing the goggles in the booth. So. Team Secret, sponsored by Dakota. You Kids. know what we need to do, actually, next time that we have a major here in Shanghai? We need to pack survival kits before, <laughs> just so that we're ready to go for anything. Oh, I already ben, did. Ben, ben does that. Like, yeah. Have you seen Ben's suitcase when he goes? Your survival <laughs> kit is not complete, though. You have ramen and you have quest bars. You need a little more than I that. I have a medicinal pack. What's in your medicinal pack? A lot of cough drops, ibuprofen. I got some Dayquil. I have a lot of stuff in there. Ah, ben comes prepared. Yeah. He's a walking I'm prepared. Prepared. room with him next <laughs> time. <laughs> Dr. Wu. <laughs> Bans out on the Enchantress now here from OG. Spawn's still there for secret. I mean, banning puppy out. Yeah. <laughs> kind of similar to game one, we saw the Enchantress second stage banned as well. Just limiting what he can be playing. So this game, he's going to probably be on a very defensive hero. I mean, he, sometimes he plays really similar, like Fly, like both of them. If mm. Puppy's not on the jungle, he's more on like a Dazzle. Like, it's one of his most favorite heroes. Dude, I'm surprised we haven't seen Omni yet. Or like, more oh, Omni. Omni OD, yeah. 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 All I hear about is Omni OD, and how crazy it is in the pub scene. It's Yet crazy. to see it in the competitive scene, because I've been awaiting someone to just finally dissect it and break it down. 
It could still happen, but just pick Doom. You just pick Doom. Devour, it's something OG have already shown. You devour the perch creep, or the Sather, and mm -hmm. then you have the three second cooldown, and then you have Doom. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the secret taking a lot of time on this last ban. It's also, they, they pick right afterwards, so probably thinking about what they want to be picking. And... Yeah, yes, of course, the Batrider's got to go, something that OG played in every single group stage game they had. Were oh. they really bad? Uh, I guess No-Tail uh, no played yeah. no it. Yeah. Yeah. If they picked well. the bat, No-Tail would play it. I think I mean, it's a big comfort. I mean, don't you feel they have really good heroes against the bat? Relocate yeah. plus the Astro? As, playing, as an OD player, sometimes you just hate playing against bat, though. Yeah. Like, it, it's, just, it's just awful. Because you just can't run up and just right click. Let, let the yeah. record reflect that Ben admitted to being an OD player. I probably played him only a few times this patch, but most <laughs> Mafia. Let's kill him. It's, yeah, you're just short range. You're forced to get a BKB way earlier than you want. Like, you have to play defensive sometimes, and like, you know, it's just it's just not good. I they, think against Omni, he'll go fast BKB anyway. He'll go like drums, blink BKB anyways. Unless they pick Omni, then he doesn't need, <laughs> then he doesn't need BKB. Wasn't it a game won by this time when they had so much hate towards Puppy and all the heroes he likes to play that he just opted to grab up something like the Earthshaker? Is yeah. that something they can just yeah. go back for again? It's possible. You have to pick Envy, a very kind of self-sustainable safe lane carry, because you've got Earthshaker with Io. They pick yeah. Dazzle, which suggests they maybe want something for Envy yeah, that's just like a Spectre or something. I don't it's know. just Earthshaker, Spectre, or, uh, Earthshaker plus Io is just not a very good yeah. like combination. I, I, I just like Dazzle plus yeah. Io. It more. limits Envy's possible heroes yeah. that he can play if you pick Earthshaker. But with Dazzle, you can pick anything for him almost, because Dazzle's yeah. such well, a good zoning support. Going back to what you guys brought up of the idea of a safe lane OD to deal with the Tidehunter and really punish him in the off lane, mm -hmm. would you consider like a tiny IO mid instead? It's still possible, it's just... Uh, or is that too greedy? Because they, they ran one IO in their last 10 games coming into this match, and it was with the tiny. I mean, I it's, it's just, it's still possible, but I just feel like, don't you think that if they were to do it, they would have picked a more greedy yeah. support? Because you can actually get away with it with an OD safe thing. I'm not, if I'm, it wasn't secret, I totally agree. It's just like secret, um, because of how the team functions, are more likely to put Wii on the OD and put Envy on some other carry. Yeah. Even though I, I think what you're suggesting makes total... I, I think most teams would actually put OD against Tide. And pick like a much greedier support to just get the levels, because you don't really yeah. need the support to zone the Tide. Have like a Shadow Shaman or something, or I don't know. Man, look at that OG be. team fight. Man, they have kind of, so much control strong. for Io. Did not Secret have this, <laughs> this lineup before? Is it game one? Yep, they're the Lion and the Shaker. Yeah. That's oh. a lot of AoE for an IO lineup. OG do love their Earth Shaker. They are 4-0 with it this patch so far. Typically, we, though, we see it on the, the Moon, the Moon Shaker, but obviously this time it looks like it'll be the grab-up for a crit. I mean, this is definitely going to help the Tide, because uh, when you're having a tough lane, say you're up against OD, you have that Fissure to help you get level 2. It's extremely important. So like, having the Fissure there is going to help him. I mean... It's on Radiant, so they can't really do, you know, the pull that you do with the Fissure oh, on Dire? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't really do that on Radiant? No. But it's still, it's still gonna help the Tide. It's not even easy on the Dire either. That's what Misery was talking about on the counter in the group stage. <laughs> they had flubbed it up a little bit, uh, I believe at MDL, but it is definitely something that's much more plausible on the Dire side. And uh, first time in the series, we're gonna see the BM come out for Secret. Big, big vision advantage right now for Secret. OG don't have anything. It almost felt like... OG wanted Secret to pick Nature's Prophet again, because that hero's been ignored up until now. It, it, it feels like coming to this series, OG said to themselves, Secret, don't play well with Misery's Nature's Prophet, just because of the farm distribution, not to say he's bad on the hero, but I think it just doesn't fit Secret's style. And that's why two games in a row, they leave it in the pool, they give it to Misery. Third game in a row, even though they just lost to it, again, they're like, take the Nature's Prophet, we, we feel confident we can beat it. That's not why we lost game number two. So right now, Secret has vision, like you mentioned, Parker for the tights. Tide doing his stacks, and OG responds with a good lane opponent against the OD, which is the Razor. I mean, both teams looking like they have a very solid game plan. Beastmaster can also be used to gank and relocate into, so they have pretty good uh, gank in the early game, towards the mid game. And a lot of pressure that can come from the laning phase, because they have really good support in the laning phase. Compared to Lion and Shaker, I would say Io and Dazzle is much better in securing your lane's farm. Mm. So both teams need their hard carry now. Ursa banned out. And Other typical uh, wish pairings. I mean, Secret, one that pops up, Secret but... is on Dire, so they might want to go for something that can use the Roshan much better. So what else is available? We saw Drow last game. 
doesn't really seem like a drought draft. Secret rush with anything. Who am I? Who am I? They got Beastmaster. It doesn't matter what carry they get. I mean, they could do it with uh, right, IO partners as well. Right now, the the hero that I think that if you talk about Roshan, like it's probably Terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's Sven. I think there's probably Sven better. Too, there's yeah. Sven. There's Ember Spirit. Not. Here, but that's an envy here. But Sven. For like a clutch game three, Envy's probably saying, "Pick me, pick me, Ember right now." Can OG anti mage troll? Oh, this is the draw I guess. Yeah, it's the same like. Okay, uh, well, maybe not now. <laughs> I think it's really important that they want to utilize the Roshan when they're on Dire. So, just basically any carry that can do the Roshan play around that would be really nice. And draw would be really good versus the Tide as well in the laning phase. But yeah, I mentioned already. Where's the, Wisp going? The Earthshaker is going to be able to help him. What? Where's the Wisp going? Mm, freestyle. Like, free Jungle. Just go where, freestyle. Where, like, wherever he feels that he can help. Like, just run around, secure runes, because uh, draw doesn't need much help. Dazzle plus draw is already really good versus the tide. So I expect this is going to be moving around, making a difference in the other lanes. Okay, so what's the miracle carried? Gyro's a fairly safe choice against the medium push strat. Uh, he plays the Razor too, right? Yeah, he plays he, the Razor. Uh, he does also play the Razor. Depending on the last series. A, a I, no tail could play the gyro as well, but I guess like the point is, what's that hero? Fast pace hero. Fast pace, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gyro seems to fit. Uh, Juggernaut, do you like him much? Uh, Who else is there? I actually like Gyro more against the Alana because yeah. it's faster and it's really good versus the relocate. And for the Astro as well, in case they use Astro to save a teammate, you have to call down for that. Mm. You guys mentioned Brood. Is this a, brood? Is this a mm. crazy Brood game? No. I don't think so. Oh! oh! First time, I believe, at the Shanghai Major, Mr. Terrorblade is not Terrible in the hands Blade. of Envy. That is, that is actually very peculiar. There's, 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 there's no other Titans. That's, That's very peculiar because, like, um, I don't really, I have not really seen them run this hero ever. Uh, and but judging by the situation that he is picked in, the enemy doesn't really have a lot of D push, but they have very strong lanes so and a lot of burst damage, which is typically what Terrorblade doesn't like to deal with because OD is really good versus Terrorblade. We didn't, to go, we didn't get to go into it before, but since it's suited for game number three, why don't we quickly flash out some predictions here? We'll, we'll start with uh, Mr. Parker there on the end. Now that we've seen the draft from both sides, how do you think that this series will conclude? Oh, I Draft-wise, I think I have to go with Secret on this one. Secret, huh? LD? I was liking OG up until the Terrorblade pick, now I'm pretty torn, but I think OG look a little more solid as a team. I thought last game was just a series of just a sequence, like the most disastrous sequence of events, and that's why it fell apart. I think the draft's more solid this time, so I'm going to stick with OG. How about you, uh, Dr. Wu? As Statsman Merlini, 100% win rate on Terrorblade, one out of one game. They will <laughs> yeah. continue this awesome streak. A you're month nice. ago, though. That was a month ago. <laughs> uh, your, your, your stats man is almost as bad. One as out of one, man. <laughs> Leaves us with... Uh, I'd rather have you as a doctor than a stats man. I, Let me say that. Where's the husband we need him to? I have to go with Parker, Debunky. though. I, I just think that Secret have a very solid drop around the Roche, and they have yeah. really good heroes versus the Tyrebit. We'll see if that's the case. We'll leave it now to Gods and LD to conclude this rivalry of a series. Gentlemen, take it away. Oh, over to the casting desk. Thank you very much, Cottle Guy. Here we go. OG already underway. Fly did TP out here early, and it looked like he may have wanted to go for that hillward in the pit, but he did bypass, uh, I believe it was Misery in the river. So opts to put his ward in a different location. So both teams getting their wards down. I'm not sure if OG actually scouted this one being deployed, but they know there could have been a ward planted. So guys, we'll see how the warding game develops, but it was very important last game because it really slowed down Moon in game one when his neutrals were warded up. This game doesn't seem like they're going to get that vision. Yeah, it's 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 funny how you play a full best of three, and even just the level one warding changes from game to game based on what happened previously. And we're not going to see Secret again go for that uh, Secret Shop Camp ward because it got dewarded the previous game. It becomes too predictable to try and do it again and again. So early on, Secret sending three heroes scouting down towards the bottom room. They do have that Observer ward, so they know there's only a Terror Blade lurking up the hill. <laughs> Meanwhile, looks like No Tail should get his early bounty uncontested here. So it'll be a bounty run for bounty run. So we'll have a pause here. It gives us a chance to evaluate some of the lane matchups. It looks like nice. it's going to be Razor versus OD. Uh, used to be a matchup where it seemed like Boots really decided the the matchup. Is that still the case? How has this matchup evolved with the changes to OD? Um, no tell and kind of classic fashion is going for the boots first on his razor um i think it's early levels pretty good for razor but once od kind of kind of gets his stride 
gets past like the first couple of minutes, gets some OKCS, he matches up all right against the against Razor. So we'll see early on probably some very aggressive play in the lane from No Tell. And I imagine fly on line, he's not just going to be blocking this first creep wave. He's going to be lurking around this mid lane, kind of like he did last game on the Winter Wyvern. They actually were okay leaving Miracle alone, even in a kind of weird matchup. It was Slark versus Nature's Prophet, which doesn't sound great, but Miracle just so good mechanically that he can handle these slightly less favorable matchups even in the carry role in the safe lane no he'll definitely need to use every ounce of those mechanics as it is extremely annoying to play against the boar yeah. and the other when key you're thing, in melee form the other key thing og is gonna be doing is crit's gonna i believe fissure block this top lane to try and guarantee that moon can get level two on tide hunter having both anchor smash and kraken shell makes this lane a lot more manageable for him so and also just accelerates his jungle. If he can get level 2 from the lane, then he can kind of swing into that big camp, get his farm going with the Iron Talon, and just farm a whole lot faster. So we'll see that early Fissure here at top from crit. Yeah, and overall Moon start should be much more like game 2 than uh, game 1. We'll have the IO partner, but uh, we'll have his camp unblocked, and we'll have the creep wave pretty far back. It's against the Drow, so he'll definitely need access to the woods. We'll see if Secret make any moves to try and counter that. Pilot Eye with a single sentry here mid, so maybe he tries to sneak up, but it's Kart already lumbering down into the river. He'll probably throw a Fissure. He's got the cla he's got like a free Fissure because he's still got his Clarity going. One of the nice things about the Fissure block at the start is you get the, the double oh, Fissure. Big static link here early from Noctail. Plus 28 damage. He'll be very satisfied with that beginning. And gets his first CS of the game. Wanting to hit Pilot Eye, but doesn't have the vision up the hill. So it looks like Miracle will get some help early on with Fly zoning the Beastmaster. He should farm well and... It doesn't, doesn't seem like Misery will have that easy harass that he was looking for early on. But at the same time, you look at Moon in the offlane, won't be so fun for him either. Neither offlane are going to get the 1v1. Yeah. Not the best win rate on the Terror Blade though, as you can see. Feels like a static laning setup so far from Secret Gods. So yeah, both teams... Unlikely to move much early. I mean, OG can look to, I mean, they're helping out the mid lane with the Shaker as much as possible, just wanting to make sure no tail can do okay here. And the, the Fissure combined with the Static Link can give OD some problems. So we'll see, in theory, both OD and Razor kind of focusing a, as much on harassing and preventing the other farming as they focus on their own farm. Oh, Moon which... posting up here on Eternal Envy, but Poppy, he's taking the early point in Poison Touch, so the harassment will be substantial. And he's still only level one, no frost arrows. Moon desperately wanting that level two. He finally gets it, finally gets the point in Kraken Shell. He's gonna have to use a t burn a teleport scroll, and he has to go back to the base even. So a slow start for the time, but finally level two. Meanwhile, bottom misery has been hexed, stunned as well. Crit coming through with the fissure, likely to be the first blood here. Bottom, and it's been two secret first bloods up until now, but this time it's OG who strike. An important kill and miracle. The yeah. first one and, to get the gold. And Terrible is one of those heroes when it kind of disappears for a while from the meta, which is kind of what's happened. You kind of forget how strong it is as an offline and how much damage he can do when he's in Metamorph. That uh, you'll make a mistake like that and be like, holy crap, Metamorph does that much damage with the, ref the reflection so flow to help <laughs> set up his right, right, right clicks. Yeah. He TPs in, he's taking 80 ish damage a right click. This is a, a kind of brutal hero when he's got Metamorph up, but then he has this downtime where effectively Metamorph. Morphosis is this hero's ultimate. That's the spell you've got to fight around as a Terra Blade. Yeah, and it's it's kind of like when it's daytime uh, and you're against the Night Stalker. You you want to take advantage of your windows versus the hero. So this will be one for Misery. He's using the boar here to help jungle fly. Uh, teamwork here from the opponents. And finally die. Meanwhile, down on the river. So we are going to see Envy getting free farm to match that of the Terra Blade. The mid laners, oh, though, gosh, right not there. farming well at all. No tail. Four, five, and two. Yeah. Even Weeha, only nine and three. Neither hero getting much out of this mid lane early on. I've been, from what I've been seeing them, Pi and Wee, even when Wee's lost damage, they've been doing a great job just like denying together. They'll uh, attack their own creeps at the same time. And Razor, even when he had plus 20, plus 30 damage from the Static Link, was still getting denied by these two heroes. So just good laning coming out from Pi and Wee. And Earthshaker doesn't offer that same laning presence as an Io can as far as your actual last hitting goes. Well, Crit has trying to been make, uh, trying to make a efficient use of his time. He has tech the Ancients, now he's holding the top lane. Looks like Pylite Die wanted to creep up. He's, he's going go for the backstab. Effectively play a pseudo offlane Earthshaker now with Moon transitioning into the jungle. So it's kind of going to be a greedy, slow-paced oh. tempo from OG for now. Because they can't stay that way. That's when the, that's what happened last game, is they started off slow-paced, focusing on their farm, trying to be a bit more greedy, but then once the Drow Ranger lineup came online around 10 to 15 minutes, they lost tons of towers, gave up kills, and that can't happen again. So they can pay, play slow-paced for now, but it, it's gotta, they've got to adapt from last game. I lie die camping out the 4-minute rune. He grabs a, an arcane rune. The bounty will spawn bottom. Tethering his way in. 
but it has it is something OG demonstrated in game one is they they're very adept at maximizing their efficiency. So we talk about Envy as an individual being great at that, but they've done a really good job at making sure they always get their pulls off, stacking ancients whenever possible. We saw Puppy do it on the Enigma last game, incredibly efficient in the jungle. Uh, and this game, we're seeing it in terms of the lane swaps and rotations as crit matches at three and a half, held the off lane, still the tight hunter getting the jungle. So efficiency, a big theme throughout this series. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Puppy's kind of sitting around. No one really just zoned out of the top lane for now. And I mean, both the, the secret supports are kind of perhaps a bit more known for not playing quite as greedy as some of the other teams. And if OG are playing kind of the passive farm game, taking their own jungle, at some point secret are going to have to up the tempo and take the game to OG. Yeah. And we'll see if maybe they even look to contest these ancients. Crit now stacking again. That's going to be a yeah. quad stack if it doesn't get blocked. And the Triceratops cooperate. So a whopping pile of gold there now available. He's got the double Triceratops too. That's the dream. That sounds kind of painful, potentially. Mid lane, they're making the move. The Banish coming through. They should be getting the tether slow here. On to No-Tail. Heal bomb out as well. Moon arrives and tries to turn. And he's only level four. They do manage to stun Weeha, but he's not quite under tower. And Weeha might look for a bit more. Hex from Fly. Weeha chasing forward. They had the Grave available. That was a dangerous moment for OG. Could have hemorrhaged kills. But they will get out safely. And meanwhile, Miracle posts you up in the bottom lane and getting aggressive. He uses this time to farm freely. Envy doing the same top. So the safe laner is continuing their relatively equal dance. And next Metamorphosis has been popped at bottom. They're trying to pressure this tier 1 tower, but Puppy's already TP'd in. He's rotating, recognizing that this is uh, a tower pressure that's looking and aim to try and take down this tier 1 tower early. But with Miracle pushing this alone, Secret should be in a position to, to defend this one. Yeah, and as mentioned, Envy doing the exact same thing top, albeit a tiny bit slower. So I do want to point out, OG, uh, they dropped a sentry up on the hill after stacking the Ancients, so they don't want to get caught out by Secret there again. It's time for a quick eye wash. Yep. <laughs> you wear glasses though, so you're okay, surely. Even more, I mean, I wear contacts sometimes, but yeah. I don't know. Gotta get that LASIK, I guess. They should sell goggles at the concession stand. I, I just want to see players, like the last <laughs> suit up. Like, yeah. <laughs> the full on, like, no, what you're we in should high do. school again. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're in chemistry class, like, yeah. and you accidentally get chemicals in your eyes. They've got the eye wash. We need those set up right outside the booth so that the <laughs> second that Envy's eyes start to bother him, just throw them in the eye wash. Yeah. Irrigate that, clean him out. He needs to create a system so, like, in between CS, he can just like tilt his head, squirt, squirt, oh, back and, to last hitting. Oh, we could have an eye wash at the, at the player desk, built into the monitors, you know. <laughs> it's just what if the thing malfunctions? It just blasts you in the face when you're in the middle of the game. I, it's it's skill cap stuff, you know. You gotta you gotta add to the difficulty skill cap of Dota. <laughs> People always complaining. Oh, you've Create, get it, get rid of the, well, keep the, the blink dagger, well, what do you, the leash range stuff. Like What, what you do you think we've been doing this, Major? <laughs> I mean, the next step is to release wild animals into the arena and see if the players yeah. can survive the onslaught. The glue is just the beginning. <laughs> I, I would put my money on OG in that case. I, I think Fly is probably the most capable. Oh, yeah. There, there's anyone... Moon's intimidating as well. I don't in know his about his way. survival skills, but... Yeah. Or he'll make them laugh. That's what he'll do. All right. Envy's ready to go. So we're back into it now. Farmwise, Terrorblade, 600 net worth ahead. Most of that coming because of the first blood. Now they're actually dead even on CS. 40 CS, 14 denies. But it does go back to the importance of that early draft and denying secret any of the puppy junglers because you look at experience. Already Secret was up like over a thousand at this point, I think, but this game is actually yeah. OG with the experience well, lead, and that's before the Ancients get cleared out. Yeah, and it kind of, when I was mentioning what, how Secret will often play like two kind of more de defensive, less farming and supports, that's when Puppy's not that's on That's the struggles. exception, yeah. 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 So they deny the exception, and now they're, they're right back where they want them, or at least relatively so. Moon's back towards top. He's got a lot of XP out of the jungle and just the offlane. 22 CS, level 5.5, wants to make sure he can get that level 6 at a reasonable time. And being level 6 when Secret start rotating and looking to apply pressure on towers is going to be key for him. So Crit continues the stacking shenanigans here top lane, and so too is the IO of Pylidae. Both teams building up large amounts of additional golden experience to be claimed later on. Misery, meanwhile bottom, does have a roar available. Yep. So maybe we see a kill opportunity here for Secret, but no relocate online yet. Pylidae is going to start his jungling now. But he's, he's doing it alone, it looks like. It's just... I guess looking to, I mean, we talk about how Secret either need to be aggressive or 
like kind of compete with the farm that OG's getting. OG's getting farm out of three of the lanes as well as the jungle with the Tide Hunter previously. Um, and I guess this is Pi's way of saying, well, let's just play the greed game rather than go aggressive right now because they're perhaps not quite ready to make any aggressive plays. Although, I mean, I feel with Beastmaster having level six, having raw, he hasn't got the mana right now. He's just sitting in this off lane trying to keep his tower alive. And that's the problem here. If he goes for a gank, one of the views of this Terra Blade pick is a hero that can pressure this top bottom lane. lane. They have Ravage. They're TPing in the Razor. They want to make a move forward here. Moon, though, doesn't have a point in Gush, so they're just going to have to steal damage and slowly walk after Puppy. It's only a level two plasma field, not enough. Mm. So a wasted TP there. Mid lane was not really pushing, so there will be some missed experience in gold. But I, it seems they may leave the lane for no tail, send the tide back into the jungle, and uh, look to start farming some neutral camps. Moon with the Iron Talon, the complete arcane boots. So very standard stuff here from your tide. Yep. We'll see Miracle Bracer picked up, so he may be going for a Treads drum so He's got a lot of just early game, cheap, cost-effective items on Terra Blade. And I think recognizing that Secret are going to have a lineup that can take a very early Roshan, that can fight very effectively in the early game. We're likely going to see heavy stats build from him. Drums, SMY, I don't Scotty. think he has to play Greedy either, because they have so much team fight. then Terra Blade with enough HP yep. is, is quite a fearsome, even early to mid game threat, as long as they can't burst him. And, you know, they've got Fissure to back him up, uh, probably a fast mech on the Tidehunter, or relatively fast, or maybe even the Razor. And you've got all the AoE. Uh, of the Ravage as well. One of the question marks for me is what build he's going for. When the hero first got added, we were seeing a bit more of the max reflection build, but then when there was a period where a lot of the Chinese teams were playing him in the carry role, like Silo, they're going this Helm of the Dominator max illusion builds for the farming efficiency. But if you want to fight, okay, he's going to go two points in images for now. You, the max reflection early is very strong, but looks like he's going to kind of prioritize at least some farming efficiency with the illusions. That's where he's still holding serve here at the bottom lane. Fly. About to get level 6, so a lot of key levels coming online. Relocate also up for Pylidae as he makes the long walk back to base. They don't really have the most traditional uh, IO partner for those relocates, but Roar's online, Relocate's online, Finger's about to be up, Ravage has come up. Yeah. You gotta figure somebody's gonna make a move soon. And it feels like one of the big problems right now for Secret is, well, not so much problems, but one of the, uh, one of the issues they have is Misery's sitting in this off lane with no mana. There is no kill threat coming out from Beastmaster, and OG have vision of him, they have the lane ward, they have a creep wave pushed up, so they see he's just sitting here, he's the kill threat right now. No one else in this secret draft is going to kind of lead, like, a relocate with an OD is not really all that scary. You need the raw to, to get kills, to set up kills, and Misery sitting bottom without mana is it's just giving OG freedom to farm their jungle, farm all the lanes, and not be scared at all. So I think Misery needs to perhaps spend more time missing from the map, or at least if he's sitting bottom lane, he needs to have mana for raw. Because if he has mana for raw, he can raw the, the Terra Blade as a relocate comes in, and you've got yourself a kill. Which is why he brings a clarity to himself, fixes uh, his problem. Instead, he's the one who's going to get ganked out. Fly comes from the rear. They spring the trap. Quick with a beautiful fissure. Cuts off the retreat. Misery getting pounded by Miracle. The last hit will go the way of the Terra Blade. So another yeah. kill for him. Slightly behind here in CS and Envy, but... OG can group up, look for a push, and you look at Secret Gods, they have some good pickoff potential, but they don't really have the best tower defense. Light on the AoE, not much creep clear. They will not be stopping this. Yeah, it just seems a bit too kind of passive coming out from Secret here. And even this mid tower push, which is kind of reacting to what's happening bottom, OG are in position to defend. Ravage coming through, connects on Pilot. I also catch out Envy. OG, a big grab there, No Tail still stealing damage through this. He's already up to 150 and rising. Envy's gonna go down. They're running onto Weehaw, might get the kill there too. Weehaw survives, lives to tell the tale, the grave for Envy, keeping him in fighting shape. They gust him back, Secret with the huge turnaround. Then the roar committed, down goes the Tide Hunter. No help in sight for Miracle. He's busy pushing at the bottom lane. And after grabbing the tier one, he'll march onwards to the tier two, but my god, Secret oh. with the huge saves. They did have to buy back their IO for it, but it was worth it. Back. Yeah, absolutely. That that buyback secures the T1 mid tower, makes sure that fight goes well for them, and OG just didn't quite have the the tools to chase down those kills. It was amazing Fisher catching out too, but they couldn't quite kill Envy before the Dazzle stun wore off, and now They've come in, they've oh found no. the action stack. That happens again, can There's OG no contest? Too. There's no Ravage, they, they have an Echo, but good luck walking into that. Secret, if they can grab all these Ancients, it's... They're gonna grab some, maybe not all, massive but they've economic taken damage. a decent enough amount already. They're committing though. everything, and OG are streaming towards those Ancients. They're right past the Creep Wave in full vision to secure this. About half left, it looks like, maybe a mm. bit less. What a big hole for Team Secret. Uh, or for, for OG, rather. Yeah, for, yeah. And now, immediate smoke. So they drag them to the Ancient the Secret. 
just straight towards the Roche. I mean, this is really good shot calling here, and we'll have to see if OG are able to contest the Ravage. Still on cooldown for a minute. It feels like we're finally seeing Secret, their playstyle, like their, their individual players' playstyle meshing with the overall team strategy. Because I don't really feel like their individual players are mixing up their playstyle. We're still seeing this kind of hit and run, kind of split push style Dota, but they have much clearer direction. Puppies kind of put all the pieces together and they're actually taking objectives, they're stealing ancients, they're still doing those cheeky early roaches and Secret right now looking very, very good. Yeah, that was a big swing of momentum. It had been starting to feel like OG were getting the better trades, but still the ancients grabbing the Roche. Falls back at Secret's court. So we'll see OG now. Roshan uh, being denied to them. Backing off a bit, Miracle heading towards the top lane now. It looks like he is going to be building into a Sanjin Yasha here, or at least a Yasha early on, uh, getting the Blade of Alacrity. And again, we kind of see Notel struggling to find the farm, and this is something I mean, OG normally prioritize Miracle and Moon's farm. They put Moon, they give Moon the jungle, he goes Iron Talon, and that's where I just feel like having him on this hero like a Razor who needs a lot of farm, he, he ran in last fight and just didn't have the items to really stay alive, is a bit of a weak point in the OG draft. It's not that no tails having a bad game, it's that OG, as far as their overall strategy, they don't allocate farm to him. No-Tail averages insane hero damage per game, but he also has one of the lower like it gold was, per games as far as carries go. It was 19% of the team's gold and 31% of their for, damage. For a most carry player, they're all above 20. Most, most players we've seen, it's like, 25-25, you know, like yeah. the, the gold is re very proportional to the damage they the do, but the here comes the backstab, they're making their move here, Envy getting gushed out, but they're not able to find the initiation, Moon even uh, gusted back, and Crit decides to cut their losses, drops the Fissure, Weeha surging forward, he's got the Astral ready, good stun from Fly, and a nice staggered retreat from OG, but they do give up a tier 2, they will all get away. Yeah, this is not a good time for OG to try and take fights into the OD Aegis, they're just going to kind of hit and run trying to get a, a if they can hit it like the perfect initiation from moon out of that smoke with a ravage you can find a good fight but he doesn't have his blink yet he's just about to get there and once that blink comes online i think maybe a more suitable time for og to go for that smoke play because you're on the wee huh they are nuking him low but remember he's the aegis carrier tied to grab a blink so not opting to go for the fast mech and it doesn't look like razor is going to be picking one up anytime soon they want the ambush here they want the surprise initiation but they probably don't want to do it into an Aegis. Yep. And they're getting some farm and like, towards the top lane. Pseudo trades. Terrorblade got a tier 1 tower and they're poking around a little bit here. Picks up the Yash after drum, so we will be seeing the kind of the heavy stats build. Either an SMY or a Manta style. Both feasible. The, the Manta can help you get out of the draw silence to ensure that you get Sunder off. Maybe slightly preferred. I think the Manta is probably the, a little bit better. Than it's the, the better late game grab overall as well. Yeah. Scales better as you get more stats items. And generally you don't really want to disassemble into a, a Halberd or... Silver Edge. <laughs> Silver Edge. Terrible. Silver Edge terribly. You get low from Roche. Silver Edge in. Sunder. I miss five. the days when everyone was so bad at Dota that you could get away with the, the Shadow Boy Dagon plays in Dota 1. But I guess it was Lothar's back then. May he rest in peace. But, I mean, you mentioned no -Tail's poor, and he it just continues it's to be the case here. He is getting by a no farm. Yeah. This is really rough. We've seen this quite a bit. I mean, the one team that consistently gets the Razor farm uh, is Liquid back when they were running a lot, but they also prioritize it more. They give him a lot of space. They stack for him. They protect him. He doesn't come to fights early. They don't really try to gank his lane. They just make sure he doesn't die. Yeah, to me, it's just not a hero you can pick and then not intend to give it at least, like, top two farm priority. And, like, even if you're playing him in that secondary carry position, you still need to give him a lot of farm. Like, play it like a true dual core lineup, not a tri-core. And this is, this is a problem. This is a big reason why Secret was... Two of the three games so far, they've the second stage banned the Batrider even when they had Tide because they know No-Tail likes to play a tempo controller who's less farm dependent because his team don't give him as much farm, but Batrider's not accessible. There's kind of limited options as far as those tempo controllers go, and he ends up on a hero like Razor who can't really shine in a game like this. I'll try to play catch up now. Slowly but surely grabbing the Ogre Club. Envy, meanwhile. Sanj and Yasha online. Yep. So, not trying to go for... Particularly greedy items wants to keep the pressure up. The Aegis uh, set to expire soon, though. So with the Aegis expiring, gods, and with likely a pause or a lull in the action at that point, what's the next round of steps? If you're puppy right now, what's the plan you're drawing up for the team? I wonder if they may prioritize Misery getting a Blink Dagger over the Necro 3. That was something we saw Alliance do in, uh, I think, 
two of the games yesterday when he was With, playing uh, Beastmaster. Bulldog, that's right. Yeah. Bulldog went Necro 1 into Blink Dagger before Necro 3. Misery hasn't bought his Necro 2. So um, as far as the next plan goes, it's similar to the previous game. Finding Having a way to find pickoffs easily. And Raw's reliable, but having a Blink Raw, obviously a lot more reliable. So uh, during the phase when you don't have Aegis, it's, you can't group up and just brute force your way through OG as much. So spending some time chewing through smokes, finding pickoffs, looking for kills on the Terror Blade, who's often split pushing. Is going to be a lot more valuable for Secret, oh, and that's where this these is a good time for play. a smoke. Aegis has expired. Will Pylite die reveal this one down at the rune? They're going to get Weeha, but he blinks out super quick reactions there. And it back too quick yeah. for his teammate. Pylite die even <laughs> right away. He's like, oh god. <laughs> you know you're fast when you juke your teammate. <laughs> but in the end, won't be necessary. So relocate down, but also a smoke blow in there. Oh gee, they did have a deep ward. That could have been huge. With the Aegis just expiring, you get a kill there, you farm up their jungle, maybe push in all the lanes, but he was ready for yeah. it. And for OG's side, they, they need these secondary blink daggers. They've got shakers. Um, I feel like the lines in some ways is just as important because like in a situation like that, you really need the blink hex. Um, crit, the only way he can get the insta catch is if he blink echoes, which is probably at this stage worth it for an OD kill. We're seeing a very slow paced farm game. It's only three kills a piece, kind of unlike some of the previous games. So any kill is a, means a big deal if it's on a core. You're, it's well worth using a Ravage or an Echo Slam to kill someone like OD at this stage of the game, more so for OG because they are the ones on the back foot. That's a smoke here from Secret. They showed Envy mid, but OG knew it. They pinged it out. They are throwing heroes down onto the low ground, but it's a tight-knit ball of five behind him. So Secret will break through up the ramp and away. They do have a ward on Puppy. Curious to see where they plant that. Just a sentry for now on the high ground. And it looks like they will be prepping for the last outer tower getting pushed. It's not six towers at 11 minutes, but it is still damn fast. And smoke number two. Oh, gee. Chewing through these, they're gonna lead with the Terror Blade Illusion. Maybe trying to bait something out. Pile I die, scouting out in front of the tower. They Probably calling the out that there's something a little bit odd going on here, and they are gonna make their move Miracle. The man in front immediately metamorphs in Vision of Secret is gonna slow down Misery. But again, it looks like, him. well, they might just have to settle for a, a simpler kill here. Pilot die going for the tether out and fly, says hell no. Nah. Drops the finger, gets the kill, and Crit comes in. Big echo on the two, but not enough to finish the job just yet. The Ravage as well, follow up from Mo Moon, what they lack in gold. They're making a four team fight. OG will end up getting three kills here, only losing their Razor, barely surviving on a tr just a trickle of HP as Crit. And that is a 2,000 gold swing. Interesting fight. I, Wisp was postured very aggressively there behind the tier 2 tower. I think not expecting OG to fight and defend that one. OG though, just great use of what was their last smoke. No tell just kind of runs in place that sacrificial lamb roll and at this stage of the game like that's the best thing he can do is just soak up spells be the one who kind of gets gone on and he said he's the one who kind of creates the opportunity for crit to get off that great blink echo slam then it's followed up by the ravage they unfortunately don't have the ability to also chase down we um, and he gets the blink escape but a very good fight for OG and it does highlight that secret not the best team fight lineup they're more reliant on the counter plays here as top lane fly gonna get caught out relocate forward from pilot die the hex comes through but no oh, does pop the stick. He's going to be heading back fairly soon here. Has the TP. Will he make it on time? We have Blinky forward and he actually blinks past him, but he just... Oh, the self astral. He self astrals. He was mid-click on fly, but he... Well, you talked about being too fast end. earlier for we <laughs> Again, a bit too he fast. Was <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a guessing game, but yeah, it does end up costing him in the end. That's rough. Wow. Lowest net worth at 20 minutes. Oh, that's actually right big. Fly had 2230 gold. He is going to get his blink now if he wants it. Now, sometimes those escapes aren't the biggest deal, but this could be a game changer. Double blink now on the supports. Yeah. Makes a big difference when there's heroes like Dazzle and Io in the game who are always going to try and sit back, position themselves such that they can use their defensive tools to save the secret cause, be it the tether relocate or the grave. Having a blink dagger on a lion, he can try and find and isolate heroes like Dazzle, like the Io. And bottom lane, they have found Misery here. Miracle moving on to him, has no teleport available for six seconds with Crit hunting him down. Relocate offline. Whoa. It's going to be extremely tough for Misery to make it out of this one, but he puts on his Nikes. He's juking away. Crit gets warned. He might go down to the Necrobook here. Misery somehow eking a kill out of a horrible situation. Oh, it's still a costly death on the Beastmaster, but he makes it better than nothing.
Well, speaking of, I mean, we, we saw Weejuke himself, and Crit does the same thing a bit at bottom lane, unfortunately. That's a stressful game, a big I moment for so, both teams. So high pressure. A win here, you're, uh, it's guaranteed top six at that point, so yeah. a lot at stake. And this is also, I mean, just looking at this as a rematch from the previous Majors Grand Finals, this is kind of a time for Secret to kind of get some vengeance after losing that best of five. And there's just been a lot of kind of talk between these two teams, and I think a lot at stake just about proving who's the better team right now. Two of the OG players were on the former Team Secret and were, were basically kicked from the team, so... No. You see Puppy come and get a ward down while smoke, something OG are not aware of. This sees all of the OG uh -oh. heroes. OG has a BKB, could be a disastrous time to go if OG move in too far. But they're already late. A secret grabbing their Aegis. They do have a relocate available if they want to chase forward and try for a pick off. Crit dropping the Fissure to cover the path of retreat. They did have a ward scouting him out, but they're going to hold the relocate for now. Pilot died quite far back. Seems Secret aren't going to risk that big jump forward. We'll play it. It's safe. Puppy grabbing more wards. And it looks like they really they they already have the vision advantage here and they want to keep it going. Yep. Double BKB. And unlike last game, it's not as easy for Secret as far as their position they're in where they can't just try and five men down, split push a bit, kind of group up, try and take the high ground. OG have the, the blink daggers. They've got the team fight advantage. They've got Ravage, they've got Echo Slam, having a line to try and deal with the pesky supports who have all their defensive tools, Terra Blade, who's very well farmed. No Tail's not in the best position to fight until he has his BKB, but Secret, I think, aren't even going to be able to really get much done with this Aegis in some ways, and at, that's kind of a concern, because they've got the, the Dro strategy where you will see this hero fall off, and they've got to try and look for ways to, to se secure this game, which is going to have to come from kind of key pickoffs on OG Core Heroes. And relocating offensively, very risky yep. when you're walking into a Ravage and just all the burst damage that you mentioned. It feels like relocate can only be used as a defensive tool this game, which is a limitation in itself for Secret as far as moving forward ways for them to find, to, to end this game. And even defensively, you better not pop those yeah. BKBs at the wrong time or even that won't be available. I think Misery becomes the key player for Secret. The Hawk Vision for what it provides for the team as well as the only way they can use the relocate offensively is Misery kind of roaming around finding Blink Roars. Uh, and I say Blink Roars, he needs to farm up a Blink Dagger, I feel, desperately because it creates those pick-off opportunities. You can have four Secret Heroes like pushing a lane while Misery tries and finds it. Because Terrible, if he sees a group up push from Secret, he's going to go split push. And that's where Misery, if he can find him, hunt him down, get him with a roar, relocate in, you can actually kill off Miracles. So I think Misery He's got to be the playmaker for Secret. He's the one on a hero that can make stuff happen. The rest of the heroes, like you've got your two defensive supports who play reactionary. You've got OD who's gone for this defensive build. Until he gets a hex, he can't really play the initiated type role. And then you've got Dro, who's just your classic right clicker. So the playmaking comes down to misery this game. OG really hanging back now. The whole team ensconced within their own base. It looks like they don't want to come out to play in secret. Well, I'm just intent on farming at this point. And there's the Blink Dagger on Beastmaster, so... Uh, to the extent you mentioned Misery is the big playmaker to watch for secret, he's got a new tool to help make those plays happen. And that's the thing with OG's draft, is they've got numerous heroes. They've got three heroes who can kind of fulfill their role. Two, which as far as big team fights go, but even Lion uh, in some ways. Blink forward banish. Oh, aggressive move here, but <laughs> that's all. And Looks no like tells like, like man, I finally, got to be, I finally got an item, guys. Let's, let's do this. Let's go fight. Yeah, well, I don't know if they want to just fight right now, actually. Not fairly important one uh, to deal with the OD. And uh, at the same time, it's still a draw lineup with a Beastmaster Roar. So it does not mean he's a tank by any means. Lots of physical damage. There's Weave as well to help amplify physical damage coming out from Secret. And on that note, we're not going to see Moon go into the more standard mech or Greaves. He's actually building straight into Shiva's or... Yep. I guess maybe AC from the looks of things. I think a, a good Shivers game. OD is not going to have the best attack speed, so the attack speed slows quite effective against him. Um, and just having the extra armor going to help a lot against the Drove Beastmaster, the Weave as well from Puppy. I think something that OG are recognizing is that because of the nature of Secret's Draft, having these two defensive supports in Io Dazzle, they're not going to scale well to the late game. Compare that to what the Earthshaker Lion Duo bring. These heroes have tremendous kill potential and teamfight 
abilities as you go into the late game. So Secret, their two supports may be able to save a core in the late game, but OGs can do that through their disables as well as find kills on key heroes. They can lock down a hero like an OD, a draw ranger, when catch them before they can get a BKB off with a blink echo slam, with a blink hex. So there's just a lot more late game potential out of OG's lineup. And yeah, so it, it it really sounds like you you feel they're a ticking time bomb and Secret need to defuse it soon. So to the extent yeah. that's true, how long do they got? When is this thing gonna blow up? Probably the Aegis cheese push. Um, the OD the OD will have hex around that time. So I mean I'm talking really like ten minutes away because we're looking well maybe for like six to eight minutes away. They've still got an Aegis now, but this Aegis is not the timing that's good for for Secret. They missed their. I mean, they didn't have opportunities early. If they did really well in the early game, they could have perhaps been in a position to take racks. But as things currently stand, it's going to be the next level of items, the Blink Hex from OD, um, the Aegis and Cheese, where they've got the ability to try and take it to OG despite OG having the better team fight. They'll just have that extra life advantage and that perhaps item or two advantage. Like, you look at the top net worth heroes, three of the four are in the secret cap, yet they still can't push. Yeah, and you know, you can tell Secret know it, so they're building towards a Hex here on Weeha, it appears. Love the Blink Hex initiation, powerful for pickoffs, that plus the Roar, and the Relocated. And you gotta imagine, they'll be looking to use those tools to find the power play that they haven't been able to yet. OG holding back in the mid lane, but they are dealing with a big network of wards. They've done an okay job at dewarding, but you can also see all the misfires here as they struggle to maintain any semblance of vision. Could be the difference maker for Secret. Yeah, and as much as I, I talk about OG having really good supports and just a pretty good lineup to go into the late game, they need the farm to go into the late game, which is currently what they're kind of struggling to find. They haven't got the items on their core heroes outside of the Terror Blade. Raze is still struggling to really find any semblance of farm, just has this BKB. But it's very much a one team fight game. We haven't really seen that big team fight. If, if OG win one big team fight on a high ground defense, Secret probably lose the game right then and there. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so not right then and there, but at that point, I don't, I don't think Secret will be able to go well into the late game. Like, uh, with Tide, Razor suddenly able to find items through a team fight. Secret very much, I think, recognizing it's that one big team fight. They've got to have the best possible, like, just items for. They've got to have ages. They want to have cheese. They want to have everything ready before they take that one team fight, which is just going to decide this entire game. Yeah, it goes the other way. Moon blows a ravage on BKBs, and yeah, you may just be <laughs> looking at GG instantly. But OG are going to start to maneuver here towards the top lane. They were just farming the Ancients. Weeha playing it safe, backing up only about 250, 300 gold away here from a Hex. You can see just the tension. Neither team looking to go for any risky plays because when we talk about what the two teams, as far as finding kills go, like it's Misery who can find the solo raw. So he is kind of lurking around this bottom lane, applying pressure, seeing if any hero comes this way to actually go for a Ooh. kill. There's a, there's a new pickup, the Aghanim Scepter. I'm curious how many times this has been picked up. I think it's been like one or two games with the Aghanim Scepter, maybe. Very, very few. Is this the uh, Terrorblade Illusion counter? Yes. Absolutely. How it, how good do you think this is going to be against them? I, I mean, I can only kind of theory craft here. I count on Envy to pull this out. The heck yeah, Strow in 30 minutes is a crucial game three decider. This is this is definitely legit against the Terra Blade, even more so with all the illusions. And he's got enough. He's still got 2k gold. So the one main worry for Envy is if Terra, if there's suddenly a team fight where Terra Blade has like a evasion, like a butterfly, and he doesn't have an MKB, but he can quickly farm an MKB right now. He's sitting on 2.3k gold. He's well equipped to deal with those illusions and All right. in a pretty good position here. Let's see. Maybe Secret uh, just planning on using it to shove out the lanes as well. That could be an option. For now, Notel is progressing slowly but surely in terms of his inventory. Razor grabbing the Hyperstone, working towards an AC. So they are gearing up for heavy armor. And versus the Drow Beastmaster, you certainly will need it. On both teams, it's all its all about the, the physical damage in some ways. Envy's got even a, a Frost Armor creep just following him around a bit. Now a medallion coming up. Oh, this yeah. is Game of Armor. <laughs> I like how completed it's in, uh, in quotes <laughs> Was here. Was the joke going for one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, Miracle keeps on farming, but he's... you are going to look at this terrible. Like, what point is he going to be equipped to fight into this lineup? And it, he's going to struggle at a lot of stage of this game. There's so much farm on Dro and OD. His hero doesn't match up well against an OD, even more so when OD oh, has heads. they're moving towards top. They want to come in for the catch here. Not quite there. Uh, just a few seconds away from getting jumped. No tail. Rushing in, but Pilot Eye able to sneak away through the river. No tail going straight into AC as well, yeah. 
it's uh, I think a necessity that he goes for that big late game item just because the pace of this game is very much gearing towards that stage and here we go this is like your pub build Aghanim's oh man Maelstrom. envy chan yeah. look at this maelstrom eggs the terabyte counter this is this is beautiful you can get the procs on the splinter attacks as well which is what makes oh really orb oh dear on, like orbs like maelstrom on the hero when you get ag scepter that's that much more brutal do you it's think envy's played this exact matchup and done it before or do you think this is uh a theory craft. I'm really curious. I I'm wish he was here right sure. now. We just pause the game, ask him real quick. He probably needs to wash his eyes anyway, so you know. <laughs> Let's just give him yeah, a wash your eyes, step out your booth, we'll have a bit of a benefit pause. the production. Oh uh, and the I mean I've had this is like what pubs do to grief people is just sit in the jungle with Ag's Maelstrom <laughs> and come out with like triple maelstrom or something. They're moving in though and oh. with the BKP dodge there on the echo. This is gonna be a hard fight for OG. He goes on to no tail, just crushes his way through the maelstrom has the line up, moons on the run, Jaker's gonna get finished off in one fell swoop, the big team fight that we mentioned, but it goes entirely the way of secret. Four down. Well, they got Terrorblade, but uh, forget about the items, just the reaction speed there on Envy. We saw it earlier from Weeha on the OD. We see it again here now for him on the Drow. If he doesn't get that BKB off, this is a very different game. Absolutely. You get that Echo before the BKB. I don't want to say OG Also want to point out they have a ward here, so yeah, he had he... vision the second that broke. Just too fast. And great reactions from Eternal Envy. He's kind of the, he's the make or break player for this secret team, and he has played incredibly well this series. And... OG find themselves in position, they're gonna lose a lane of Rax here, and even when their heroes respawn, Earthshaker does not have Echo Slam for this team fight. Tide, most importantly, does not have buyback, so even though Ravage is available, this is gonna be a full lane of Rax, oh, and actually, quite likely Roshan. He actually just bought a Reign of Health. Not sure it would have mattered, because I'm uh, Terrorblade and Tide versus all of those heroes, yeah, probably not winning they, the fight anyway. They weren't gonna defend the bottom lane with Earthshaker dead without Echo Slam, so I think it, it kind of works out okay as long as they don't lose two lanes of racks og still in this game but it's very much in the game but how do they win this game and that's a difficult question to answer when secret have two very farm cores that match up well against terrorblade in the late game and terrorblade's really the only farm tier on the og side well the equation has changed now where og it's not like we're comfortably inching towards their late game dominance. Uh, Secret now with the map control advantage, a fresh Aegis okay. of Cheese, the Blink Hex online, and the previously unexplored Illusion counter here yep. on the Drow Ranger are so now in much better shape. OG, I was not so much at all in, but they do buy the Butterfly for go have, having buyback on Miracle's Terrorblade, which puts them in a pretty risky position, but to me, this is like OG saying, we're in kind of a desperate position. We just gotta buy anything and everything we can right now. All right, someone get down to the booth and ask him. <laughs> he's not. He's not all chatting the eyes. Quickly, I, Winter, make yourself useful. I think useful. by now everyone knows it's 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 his eyes. <laughs> we need the booth cam on Envy, <laughs> pronto. <sighs> Moon's eyes seem okay. So yeah, he had just bought the ring of health. Uh, looks like he's going towards that refresher. Yep. If they can get to that point, then OG will probably stabilize here. But that is a long way off. Yeah. The Terrorblade Butterfly, and kind of pesky for the OD. Even the Dro's item slot limited right now, you'd have to drop the Helm of the Dominator to be able to get an MKB, or, I mean, I guess the SMY is probably the item you might replace, because you definitely mm. want to have lifesteal. He has gone for a bunch of, rel like, tier 2, tier yeah. 3 items, so it's not it's not really the best pure late game itemization, but it got the Malina of Rack, so already it's, oh, it's paid for itself. He's got the money, he can get an MKB in no time at all, it's just, how do you What do you replace, in? yeah. yeah. He's already got BKB and Egg, so you don't really need the SMY for survivability. No. The movement speed's kind of nice, but again, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what M Envy will come up with something. He always does. He always does. Uh, after CTY, he probably has the most original item builds of any <laughs> any player in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, but he's on CTY's level. He's on his. He, he's created his own tier, crafted something very unique. They are grouping up here a bit mid. OG. And they are going to smoke, and it's Ooh. just out of dire vision, it looks like. Don't think Envy. anyone got scouted. They but see him. Envy's in a great position. They play Hex from the low ground. Surprise on Envy. Echo there as well. They're going to drop the Plasm Field. Fissure's there. Perfect chain stun. Oh, gee. Grabbing a big kill. And uh, I think the crowd went wild there. I think <laughs> they, our they crowd just woke up. They love Jackie. <laughs> Known for being a, an artist in China. Absolutely 
10 stuff here in game number three. The chats continue, and V actually no buyback for a minute. Can they punish? He's he may have it sooner. He's he's uh he's like 30 gold short, and it's getting smaller and smaller the margin. So and the lanes are pushing in here. The IO OD work their magic top lane. They're gonna drag them back. OG though still have the ravage available. And will end up safely escaping, so they get a clean kill, they back off to the base, and they waste some precious Aegis time, but mid lane, Weehaw's jumped in, he's unloaded the Hex here on the fly, Sheepas guard comes out trying to mitigate that damage, but Weehaw far too big. Already 15 stolen it, they tether forward, they're hunting on the oh, moon, the boars have isolated him, the roar comes through as well, Moon gonna immediately crack it up, but Axe is slicing through, and chopping up the watermelon into more bite-sized pieces, they get the kill there as well, so it ends up being an overall two for one. Not so good a trade anymore. Yeah. Looks like that could set up secret to force this tide buyback. Envy will be respawning in five seconds, has a completed Mjolnir, and all lanes pushing in, being applying pressure. Unfortunately, secret, it will take some time to get Joe Ranger back to the front lines, but it seems to be the plan here. He TPs to the tier three tower and starts marching down mid. So <laughs> Where the career was waiting for Envy. Him. Really eager to get here. Every second counts for secret. Plasma field coming out. They are going to fissure Weeha. And lock him in position for now. There's still plenty of time left on the Aegis. Yeah, that's and now the other a thing. completed it's Shiva's Weeha. Massive in his own right. It's not just the Drow with this Ags Mjolnir build dealing with the illusions. It's OD who can one-shot illusions, it looks like. Not sure if that applies to to all the illusions. The Manta melee illusions maybe a bit tankier, but illusions just are useless against Secret right now. When the when the Drow and the OD are alive, they oh. just instantly take them out. Yeah, stun on Envy here, but not the hero you really want to be targeting with an IO tethering to him as well as the Dazzle in position. They are going to try to force heroes forward. Stealing a bit of damage there. Just the lick, though, with the static link. Meanwhile, blink forward. There could have been a fissure of Misery. Yep. Misery was uh, <laughs> in classic Secret fashion. He got the tier 3 tower top down to half HP just with his Necro 3. Manages to get out alive as well, so a bit of just pressure and damage applied. Luckily for OG, Tide not having to use his buyback means he can get a little bit closer to that refresher. OG I are still hiding on in the base though. Only the one lane of Rax down. They are a great high ground lineup. Oh, Tide actually picks up Ghost. I guess deciding that he may not ever get to a point where he can farm a refresher because he's still sitting on that ring of health, but. Just buys a casual Ghost Scepter. Oh, he's delayed it a lot if yeah. he was going to get it. This is, yeah, very much a... Probably not going to farm it at a time that we may just lose, most likely before I get it, we get it. So I want to make sure that I can stay alive against the heavy physical damage and the right clicks of Drow Ranger as well as the OD. Sanvi posted up pretty far here, working on Moon. Uh, we are having a record-setting game to this point. For him, at least. But they haven't closed OG out yet. They keep the lane shoved in. The Aegis timer dropping very low. And it will expire once more. It's a secret. They got the one Rax. But they won't get a second lane. This game continues. We're going to go in the distance, LD. Is there a point where OG get harder to deal with for secret? Because, um. you know, at first we opened the game. Uh, we had a lot of discussion about how, oh, mid lane, Moon, he's been caught out, this could be disastrous for him. OD ult is available, he's got the Hex ready as well, BKB online too. They blink in though, they look for the counterplay here, they fissure, they ravage, they throw everything oh, out, and then he gets Pi. relocated back out by Pylite! Die, OG blows their load, and now needs to run away quick, fast, and in a hurry, they manage to banish one, keeping the Razor locked down. They're gonna finish off fly, they turn back for No-Tail, running down the Razor, Weehan, heavy pursuit, finishes him off as well, the Tide, Meanwhile, top lane, they end up dropping to Misery, just hacking away at him slowly but surely, but Miracle arrives, will finish him off. They have bought back on the line, and they hold their own for now. They have no they have a metamorphosis, but no this is going to be very tough. Oh, the OD ever gets dropped, dropped, finishing off fly. The lane's still pushing in, and it's all up to Mr. Miracle without a Ravage to help him out. He slows down Envy, they get the Gush going, but he pops the BKB. He's going to turn, Mjolnir's there, the debuff, uh, or the buff rather, thrown on him. And meanwhile, top lane getting caved in. OG could be on their last legs here in the upper Bracket, Rax dropping, heroes falling everywhere you look. OG is crumbling, four dead. It's gonna be all six Rax and only Miracle left alive. The team just a bit too heavy in the end. It will end up being a 2 1 for Secret. Some very unorthodox playing picks here, but they pulled it out down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, the. 
the desk, we we spent a lot. Well, we didn't have much time. The the last pick, Terra Blade. We looked at it and we're like, is this really a Terra Blade game? And definitely not. Is the final verdict. OD destroying the illusions one shot at a time. Even Envy itemizing itemizing to help deal with them. At no point. I mean, you can. You 